And good afternoon, and welcome to a special edition of Truth to Power. And I'm your host, Darrell Griffin, and we're going to be joined uh, a little bit later in this half an hour by the esteemed congressman from the phenomenal state of South Carolina, and that is Congressman Jim Clyburn. And before we get to uh, Congressman Clyburn, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about this uh, event that's going to go on later today. And there's a lot of people that are getting pretty much excited about an event that's going to be held this evening from about 8 o'clock until 11 o'clock tonight. And that event is going to be a presidential debate between former President Donald Trump and the current Vice President Kamala Harris. And there's a lot of watch parties that are going to be going on this evening. A lot of people are anticipating this debate. The dynamics of this debate is going to be similar to the debate that was held between President Biden and former President Trump months ago. But the difference this time around is that there is a new person that's going to be debating former President Trump, and that is Vice President Kamala Harris. And a lot of people are anticipating uh, a, a lot of fireworks tonight because of the fact that people don't really know what President Trump is going to be in the studio this evening. And then at the same time, too, because they have never debated before, he doesn't know what to expect from Vice President Harris. And I'm sure that both camps are grooming each other, uh, having what they call um, staged debates with their I guess the word would be called their staffers, to pretty much like act and bring up the questions that their person that they're debating with would have as well. So you may have Pres President Trump having someone to come in and pretty much like imitate Vice President Harris, and Vice President Harris will have people to come in and imitate President Trump. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic today in terms of trying to look at when President Trump, when he was debating against President Biden, that was an interesting debate because of the fact that there weren't questions that were, um, the questions were pretty much like centered around the economy. Questions were centered around immigration. Questions were centered around women's rights. And then there was a lot of the concern when it came down to the age of the two debaters. And as, as most of the nation knows, uh, President Biden is a few years older than former President Trump. But there was a lot of concern after that first debate as to how President Biden looked when he was debating former President Trump. And some people think that that was a turning point in terms of whether or not if the President Biden should stay in the race. And there was a lot of pundits that were concerned about how President Biden did, how he performed, uh, whether or not if he looked um, like he was very, very uh, capable of responding to the way that, and, and especially a lot of the information that former President Trump was disseminating out. And uh, people were concerned, was he spending, was President Trump spending more time trying to go and make President Biden have to really kind of fact check 
some of the things that President Trump was spewing out at him. And you could see during that debate, you could see President Biden kind of looking a little bit, you know, puzzled as to how in the world could former President Trump say some of the things that he was saying. And it, it seemed like to a lot of pundits that he was being caught off guard by the things that former President Trump was throwing at him. And I think it kind of took uh, President Biden, it took him off of his square so that he wasn't really able to get across some of the messaging that he really wanted to get across during that debate. Now here you have fast forward to tonight. And that's one of the things that they're concerned about whether or not if Vice President Harris is going to be able to go and stay on point when it comes down to getting her messaging across. And we know that there's a lot of issues that the nation is really concerned about. Um, just as I was saying before, immigration is going to be something because there's a lot of polls that are out that show the Harris camp leading when it comes to certain categories and it shows the Trump camp leading in other categories. And that's what the real issue is going to be tonight, is trying to make certain that they can pretty much like get their messaging across and make certain that they can go and look as presidential during this debate as they possibly can. This is historic because of the fact that there is a potential that a female African-American will be the president for the next four years leading the nation. And this is historic. We've had a president who was African-American and was male in President Barack Obama. But now there's a lot of women that are really excited because the glass ceiling that a lot of women were concerned about was not if that glass ceiling could have been broken when it came down to having a female in the White House when Hillary Clinton was the nominee. And now here you have, fast forward, now you have Vice President Kamala Harris in that position. And when we get a chance to talk to the congressman from South Carolina, Jim Clyburn, we're going to ask him, what does he think? the issues are that really are pressing the nation is immigration, is the economy, women's rights, the education of our young people in the school system, the concern about what's happening in terms of say in, 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 in some of these schools where sadly we've had shootings where teachers, administrators, and students have been killed. And so there's a lot of issues that we need to really wonder if these issues are going to be addressed. Foreign policy. The one thing that's interesting with this debate tonight is that you've got a vice presidential Harris, that's looking in terms of, say, at what she and President Biden have done in the last four years. And then you also have a president in Donald Trump, who also led the nation for four years as well. So the question is, the concerns that the nation has about Bidenomics, the concern that the nation had about when Trump was in office, those things are going to come into play. And when we talk to Congressman Clyburn, we're going to pretty much like ask him, you know, should there be more concern from the candidate, especially looking at the impact? Because as, as a lot of people know, Congressman Clyburn really was pushing for Biden to run four years ago. I'm also hoping that as the candidates get out there in front 
it's not going to be one to where they're looking as much on the performance as they are going to talk about the issues and how they're going to address the issues. There's a lot of people that are really concerned about what's called Project 2025. And that's a 925-page booklet that the Republicans are putting out that is pretty much going to be their recipe for how they're going to run the nation from this point forward. There's talk in this about looking at different programs that will be eliminated. There's concern about uh, abortion. There's concern about Social Security. There's concern about education. There's concern about policing. So there's a variety of different, you know, concerns that people have. And if President, former President Trump wins this election, there's a lot of concern that people have about programs that they are used to getting that may not still be in existence. So our concern right now is that they're going to go and they're going to go and express these concerns to the nation. There's also the possibility that as the uh, Republicans are talking about looking at President Trump or former President Trump, as he's indicated that he would like to be a dictator. And is this something that you would want to have to preside over you as someone who is called a dictator. There are countries that do have dictators. And now the question is whether or not if we want this to occur. But it looks like we are joined now Hello? by by the Hi, I have Congressman Clyburn on the line. And we look like we are about to be joined by Congressman Clyburn. Congressman Clyburn, we are very, very appreciative to have you on Truth to Power today. Well, thank you very much for having me. And just, I, I know you've got a short period of time that we have to talk with you, but as you know, there is a debate that's going to be going on this evening. And what are your thoughts in terms of, say, on what your projections are for this debate? Which Trump do you think will show up at this debate? And what are the concerns that you think that Vice President Harris needs to make sure that she addresses during this debate, sir? Well, let me take the last one first. I think that uh, Kamala Harris needs to be straightforward tonight with the American people. Say to them, here is what I propose to do for you. Here's what I propose to do for your families. And here's what I propose to do for your communities. And just take it off that way. And for an example, she's already announced that if you are a young person, want to start up a business, she is proposing that your tax credits for starting that business be increased from $5,000 up to $50,000. That, to me, is a big deal. That's what she's going to do for your uh, business. And she has already said, here's what I'll do for your communities. I want to have a housing program, if an affordable housing program, I want to build 3 million new affordable housing. Here's what that will do for your community. And talk about how housing communities stabilize communities, how families build their wealth uh, of the equity that accumulates in homes, how home building creates jobs for carpenters, for bricklayers, plumbers, electricians, landscapers. That is what building houses is all about. And then, as he said to all those people who may be already in the upper income category, she wants to cap uh, income uh, tax, corporate taxes at 28%. And that separates her from the 39% uh, that was being proposed uh, by Joe Biden. Uh, so uh, she has a record of, of proposals, uh, and 
I will say to them, you can best tell what I will do by looking at what I helped Joe Biden do. And she helped Joe Biden do the rescue plan. She helped him with the infrastructure bill that put $1.2 trillion uh, in roads and bridges and water and sewage and $65 billion in broadband internet. She helped Joe Biden put a cap on insulin at $35 a month rather than $600 a month that so many senior citizens were paying. She helped Joe Biden uh, do the biggest climate change that we have had. You can best tell what a person will do by look at what he, he or she has done. Now, what has Trump done? He had four years as president. I want somebody to point to me one single thing that originated with him. He go running and start talking about what he did when he signed the bill uh, for HBCU. You know what he did? We put the money in there in the house. All money bills originated in the house. He didn't propose one thing. We did it in the House of Representatives. I was a vote counter. And then he signed the bill and then took credit for the bill. He tried the whole time he was president to eliminate the program that we put in place for student loan debt forgiveness. And in the whole four years that he was there, only 7,000 people got their loans forgiven. Joe Biden took the program over, revamped the program, and uh, uh, almost a million people uh, got their loans forgiven. I mean, I think it's 1.9 million to be exact. Uh, so this is what she uh, can run on, and she can point uh, to him. When he starts telling lies, this says, well, if that's the case, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do the other? And I do believe uh, people will see why they should be voting for her uh, rather than Trump. Well, let's address that first part then. So what Trump do you think is going to show up tonight? Oh, well, uh, you know, Trump uh, can't be anything but Trump. <laughs> and that is obfuscating, lying, misdirecting, disinformation, all these things make up Trump. So what you got, the only thing you can do is whether or not he is obfuscated in the night or just outright lying. <laughs> whether or not he can have a lot of misconceptions uh, uh, or uh, what I would call misinformation or disinformation or just, just facilitate uh, another attempt at misrepresentation. So uh, uh, Trump, uh, I wish uh, I could point to one. Well, he did do one positive thing uh, for rich people. He cut their taxes uh, and created the biggest deficit uh, this country has ever had. And if that's what you want, uh, then stay home on election day or vote for him. But if you want to see your children get a good shot at uh, owning a home, getting a job, getting an education, I think you'd be voting for Kamala Harris. Well, Congressman, you know, there's a lot of people that are really concerned about this Project 2025. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts on that, sir? Well, I expressed my thoughts on that the opening night at the Democratic Convention uh, back in Chicago. <clears throat> I spoke at 9 o'clock that night, and here's what I said. Trump's Project 2025 is Jim Crow 2.0. <laughs> That's what Project 2025 is. Project 2025 calls for eliminating the Department of, Edu of Education. It calls for eliminating uh, the, the Department of Homeland Security. It calls for cutting Social Security, getting rid of Medicare and Medicaid. These are safety net programs. And quite frankly, it calls for uh, putting constraints on the right to vote and limiting the opportunities for you to own homes and to get a job. Project 2025 is no more than Jim Crow 2.0. <laughs>
<laughs> so is that going to be a new catchphrase? Jim Crow 2.0? Well, I've been saying it now for about three weeks. <laughs> uh, maybe you can help me amplify it. <laughs> we'll definitely have to go and do that more so here in the Detroit area and, and, yeah, and echo that to you. But, and I'm coming up to the Detroit real soon, so i got to uh, help wake up some people up there that seem to be uh, got a little misconception about what's going on in this country. Well, you know, Congressman, we have an open invitation to you with Watkins Broadcasting at WHPR to come here and visit us. We definitely would love okay. to have you to come on the air and express more so. I would love to do so. that, and I promise you, I'm going to do that real soon. Well, we definitely want to go and keep that invitation open to you to do that. But oh. how, how much time do you have with us now? Do you have a few more minutes? I've got a couple more minutes, yeah. Okay. What, what I, more do you need? I wanted to ask you, too. Now, when you look in terms of, say, at Donald Trump right now and you look at Kamala Harris, there are a lot of people now that are really concerned about getting more young people to get out and vote and especially to get more black young voters, especially young black men. What do you say to young black men that may be thinking about either sitting this election out or not voting Democratic? What would you say to them? Well, let me say a couple of things about that. Number one, I want young black people to be selfish with their votes. I want you to think about where you are today, where you want to be five years from now, ten years from now, what would you like to see your government look like? And then look at the proposals being offered by Trump and the proposals being offered by Harris. And which one of those uh, sets of proposals will allow you to fulfill your dreams and aspirations? She has laid out an affordable housing program to build three million new houses uh, in their first uh, term in office. How many houses has Trump proposed to build that you can afford to live in? She has proposed for young people who want to start uh, running a business. My mother was a beautician, uh, and uh, she made a good living as a beautician. My father, uh, though a minister, by calling was a small contractor who owned his own business. They renovated homes. Uh, they, anybody wanting to start out as an electrician or as a carpenter or a bricklayer or want to own businesses, the landscaping business, she says, we're going to give you a tax credit up to $50,000 to get your business start. How much did has Donald Trump offered to give you or anybody in your neighborhood uh, in assistance to start your own business. Trump is doing nothing but offering tax cuts to rich people, talking about tariffs uh, to penalize other countries. And you know what happens when you get a tariff? You and your neighborhood and your neighbors will pay right. for that tariff. And you got the experts already saying that Trump's proposals will drive this country into a recession. That's what he wants. He wants to see this country driven into a recession with him as the autocrat at the top. Most autocrats sort of have a dominion over low-income people. They get rid of the middle class. This country is kept in check by the middle class. And nobody knows that better than Detroit. How many people left South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, going to Detroit to work in the automobile industry uh, when it was flourishing. That's what created the middle class. Labor unions created the middle class. Donald Trump want to get rid of the uh, uh, labor unions. That's how you create the middle class. People all around Detroit, Michigan, ought to know this better than anybody else, that you create a middle class. That's what keeps upper-income people in check. You get rid of the middle class, all you've got will be the upper class and the lower class with nothing in between. And so let me tell you this. If you know anything about the economy of Detroit, the economy of Michigan, the economy 
of Southern uh, America, you know that but for working men and women, as Joe Biden often said, Wall Street didn't build America. Working men and women did. And they did so by creating a middle class that keeps everybody in check at the top and offering the people at the bottom a way to the top. Well, I think that you've expressed this so eloquently, Congressman. And I know that when you mentioned about labor, because that's one of the concerns myself, I know I'm the vice president of the state for A. Philip Randolph Institute here in Michigan. And that was a concern that we had about labor when uh, our president, Cleo LeBrown, spoke at a conference we just had this past weekend. And there's a big concern about Trump eliminating the labor and the union. And that's something that we can't have to happen. So I appreciate your eloquence in how you express that. And to definitely make certain that black people, white people, all people, because it's a democracy for all the people, not just for some, for the rich or the, you know, or the middle or the lower class, but it's for all the people. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. So by the way, uh, you just mentioned somebody. I know that's interesting. I know uh, my communications director is here with me, and, and she's going to go through the ceiling when I say this. You just mentioned Crayola Brown. She happens to be from Holly Hill, South Carolina. I know. That's in my district. I know. So I know her very well. Uh, I didn't have to teach her. Uh, she is one of the labor union's staunchest uh I say veterans. I don't want to call her a veteran, but she is a staunch <laughs> advocate for working men and, uh, men and women. And, and though uh, South Carolina may not be a union state, it produces Crayola, who's up there helping y'all uh, do the right thing. Well, you know, Congressman, I'm going to call her tonight, and I'm going to express to her just exactly what you just said. Absolutely. She knows. I know her very well. And she will definitely appreciate hearing you say that, leader. And that's what she calls everybody, leader. So you are typical leader material that she looks at people to be. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming on Truth to Power with us today. And we definitely okay, hope that this debate is something that is going to be appreciated by you and the rest of the people in your camp as well, too. Thank you, really Congressman, for so. coming on. And we look thank forward to having much. you come and visit us, too. Okay, I'm going to do that, really. Appreciate you. All right. Thank okay. you, sir. Bye-bye. Okay. We have been on the air with Congressman Jim Clyburn from the phenomenal state of South Carolina. And you got a chance to hear his thoughts, his sentiments about how this debate will pan out tonight. So we're, we're going to wrap up with you. And we're hoping that you will tune in to the debate and get a chance to go and express your concern and your interest. And what we want more than anything else is to make sure you express your voice. If you haven't voted absentee or early voting, that you vote on November the 5th. Have a great rest of this day and enjoy the debate this evening.